I'm going to read through Significant Cigarettes by Rose Tremaine. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Language Exam, Paper 2. As I've done with previous prose texts, I shan't be reading through the text line by line. I will only be mentioning what I think are the most important elements of the text. Um, so please make sure you've read through the text at least twice and given yourself time to write down your own annotations and really think about your own interpretation as well before reading or listening to anyone else's interpretation. So looking at the title that's been um, given to this extract, um, clearly um, it suggests that the cigarettes are important. Um, so thinking about smoking um, in Eastern Europe, that's quite that's still very popular in contrast to other countries. So if you look at statistics, you'll note that um, cigarette sales are comparatively higher in Eastern Europe than in other countries. And amongst the world, uh, it's amongst the world's highest. Um, so the cigarettes, you might argue, uh, represent a cultural link to Eastern Europe. We don't know exactly from this extract where Lev is from, um, but they, they are um, described as Russian. So do do the cigarettes represent his hometown or his culture? Um, are they a source of nostalgia for him? We also know that he is an addict, so um, they are a source of comfort for him and also companionship as we'll come to. So we know that he is in a really uncomfortable situation um, and he seems really quite vulnerable um, at times as well. Um, so we initially learn about Lev. So he seats himself at the back or near the back of the coach and huddles against the window. So from his body language, it's clear that he hopes to kind of cut himself off from anyone else. He seems to be quite antisocial at this point. You could think about how this contrasts to later when he starts conversation with Lydia and seems to actually want to interact with someone. Um, but initially, he really wants to kind of hold off and keep himself to himself. Um, and then the description of his hometown, fields of sunflowers scorched by the dry wind at the pig farms, at the quarries and rivers and at the wild garlic growing green at the edge of the road. So there's a rural scenery. It's mostly idyllic, but actually there is an element of harshness here. We've got the sunflowers scorched by the dry wind. We've also got garlic growing, but it's at the edge of the road. So um, so it's it. I think this really represents kind of a rural life but also reminds us that actually rural life can actually be quite harsh living as well um he's described as wearing a leather jacket and jeans and a leather cap so the syndetic listing really just shows how simply he's dressed could suggest as well or give us early indications that he doesn't have a lot of money um and again to support this idea of him being cut cut off and being antisocial, um he his cap is pulled low over his eyes. So again, this idea that he doesn't really want to have, at this point, any connection with anyone. His skin is grey toned from his smoking. So we've got early indications here that he is addicted to smoking, but also an indication um, that he's had a hard life. We learn at the end of this paragraph that he's 43, but the fact that he's grey toned already suggests that he's, he potentially hasn't had the easiest life so far and like I said with the um, title he's clutching onto a pack of Russian cigarettes so is this really a symbol of him clinging onto his culture and it being this source of comfort as he leaves his hometown um, the verb clutched as well um, creates a sense of nervousness and anxiety um, so this is a big deal for him. He's moving country. We will later learn he's never lived anywhere else. So even though he's 43, this must be incredibly nerve wracking. And we also learn that he's moving to London without any job, um, only hope. And so this is really a great risk for him. Um, and then we see Lydia come into the picture and she notices that Lev is um, 
has a cigarette um, and she tells him, I'm sorry, but there is no smoking allowed on this bus. So the dialogue reveals that she is quite direct. She's at uh, the declarative as well. There is no smoking um, suggests confidence in Lydia as well which we don't really see with Lev so there's a contrast there in the characters Lev is someone who isn't direct is trying to avoid eye contact um, but she instead is is, um, is a contrast to that um, but he wasn't intending to smoke it it was really a companion as we see here even an unlit cigarette was a companion that metaphor there highlights his loneliness his vulnerability in this moment as he realizes he's leaving everything behind his his um, daughter his mother he's lost his wife and so he, he, this is an incredibly lonely moment for him and the um he describes it as something to hold on to, something that has promise in it. So again, it suggests that he's in this vulnerable situation where he has very little, not just in terms of possessions, but very little to live um, for, or very little prospects, not very little to live for, that's a lie, sorry, but very few prospects in his life, very little hope. And we learn that the coach is going to be 50 hours or more and he's going to be sitting next to this woman like a married couple. So that simile, obviously a married couple would be extremely familiar with one another and the fact that he's um, he's going to be sitting with her like a married couple, this complete stranger, really emphasises how uncomfortable how or how uncomfortably intimate these 50 hours will be. Um but also this indicates that he is poor. He's not flying. So he's choosing a 50-hour coach instead of however many hours it would be, a few hours, maybe two or three hours on a plane. So we do know that he must be poor as well. Um, they would hear each other snores and sighs, smell the food and drink each other had brought with them, note the degree to which each was fearful or unafraid, make short forays into conversation. So this is the wrong colour, I've just realised. So this should be this should match here. The asyndetic listing mirrors the long journey. It makes it seem endless without the conjunction and at the end of before the last item so that really just emphasizes how this journey is really going to drag on and how uncomfortable it is going to be to share those experiences with a complete stranger next to you um even though i'd say that these characters lev and lydia are mostly very different there is one thing that that i think is this shared experience and that's that they are each alone and beginning a new life so they are both immigrants both moving to London in hope of um, creating a, a new life for themselves. So that's the shared experience that brings them together. Otherwise, they seem quite different. He refers to London as the world and a world. This repetition here of referring to um, to London as if it's a completely different world, almost a different planet, um, highlights how alien London is to him. And again, that just really emphasises the great risk um, and how overwhelming this experience must be for someone who's come from a rural town and lived there all his life and not known any different. And this would explain why he's clutching onto his cigarettes and feeling really quite nervous at this point. He also knows he's going to break his back working. The alliteration of the B here um, draws attention to the hardship ahead. Um, and then the dash, if only that work could be found, highlights the sense of uncertainty. So again, this is a great risk for him. He doesn't have work waiting for him. So he's taking a leap of faith on jumping on a 50 hour journey. And that emphasizes how desperate he must be, that it's worth the risk of jumping on a 50 hour co coach journey, going to a country you know nothing about, you know experience about, of, you barely speak any of the language. So that's highlights kind of the extent of his desperation. So something to li keep linking back to is Tremaine's purpose of doing this is really to encourage us to pity him, to, to really have compassion, not just for Lev, but for immigrants in general who um, come from um, backgrounds that that would be considered less privileged than our own. 
Um, he would hold himself apart from other people, find corners and shadows in which to sit and smoke, demonstrate that he didn't need to belong, that his heart remained in his own country. So here we have um, diction that reveals a sense of separation, apart from people, corners and shadows, doesn't need to belong. Um, and that really shows how marginalised immigrants must feel um, in, in a foreign country. Something to add to that, demonstrate that he didn't need to belong, suggests also that he expects not to be well received by British people. And so you could link that to xenophobia as well. Um, he fully expects people to potentially look down upon him um, or to not be so happy about his presence in their country, as they would put it. Um, and he describes when they make stops. So there is a lavatory on board, so they'd only stop if it, um, for gas. And when passengers are able to stop for a break, they clamber off, they walk for a few paces, they see wild flowers on a verge, soiled paper, paper among bushes. So what we he see here, I would argue, the flowers might symbolise hope or something or even just beauty, but it's on a verge, so it's really out of reach. I would say that's symbolic, that um, everything seems quite melancholic um, on this coach journey, and everything just seems out of grasp. That's the way I read it, but I'd be interested in hearing other interpretations. And then we're starting to see a transition from the rural setting he's left to a more urban setting with the soiled paper among the bushes. So everything obviously seems a little less idyllic at this point. But what are the passengers doing? They're looking for a clover leaf, a clover leaf being a symbol of hope. So despite things not looking so great for them on these stops, they are looking for signs of hope. And isn't that the reason why they are, they are migrating? They are in hope of a better life. So it really kind of represents that journey for them as immigrants. And then they will be herded back. So the verb here makes them sound like they're being treated like cattle. So that highlights maybe this journey is really quite dehumanising. They're all kind of stuck um, on in this small space for 50 hours and told when um, they can and can't have a break from the journey. And they arm themselves for the next 100 miles. This warlike diction makes the long journey seem like a battle. And it obviously highlights um, how difficult it is for all of them. Um, linked with the soiled paper among bushes, you can also refer to the stink of another industrial zone. Again, just this idea that he's leaving this beautiful rural setting for a more urban setting. But with that comes... Um, greater job opportunities. There would be times when the journey would seem to have no end. This is hyperbolic because of course the journey will eventually end but it, again it just emphasises how excruciatingly long this journey is and how uncomfortable he must be. Then we get to a flashback and we learn that he has really led a life of hardship. We hear about his father working at the sawmill and how they would take naps in the day, um, either on a mound of hay or on a mossy carpet of a forest. That suggests long working hours if they're having to take naps in that way. He also slept on a rag rug beside his daughter's bed. You could look at this in two ways, well, in, in multiple ways. One is in clearly an incredibly loving father and protective father maybe there's only one bed um, and then we learn that his wife died as well and he lay on the floor next to her for five nights in the hospital so there's been great hardship for Lev but we also learn that he's a family man he's looking back at moments with his family working with his father looking after his daughter and looking after his wife um, so that m makes the journey seem even harder. This is an incredible sacrifice he's making to leave his mother and his daughter behind. Family clearly is very important to him. Um, and then he talks about bringing uh, Marina somewhere in hopes for her um, in hopes in finding a cure just in case nature could cure what man had given up for loss so there's clearly a sense of desperation there to help 
his wife who otherwise seems to be doomed um and she makes a comment if only we were storks storks being a symbol of life um they can be in literature they can be seen as a symbol of eternal life and that's obviously something she wishes for because she's facing death um, but you could also see storks as a um, symbol of migration they're migratory birds so this sentence here if only we were storks is a little ironic because actually you could argue lev has become a stork he's migrating and in and in some ways he is um starting a new life which is what a stork represents um so that's one way of looking at that um notice the contrast in the body language at the beginning where he's he wants to cut himself off and then actually he starts a conversation with lydia um suggests that he doesn't want to be lonely and it's not so easy for him to remain in the shadows and keep to himself um and look at Lydia's situation. She says, I have some interviews in London for jobs as a translator. And he, he says, that sounds promising. And she says, I hope so. So yes, she has some prospects of a job, but you could argue they are still in the same situation. They are still taking a huge leap of faith, moving to a country where they do not actually have a job waiting for them. Um, but she does seem potentially to have uh, more of a hope than he does because we later find out his English isn't very good and he's he has low skills. Um, when asked why she is leaving, she um, describes every day, summer and winter, I looked out at the schoolyard and the high fence and the apartment block beyond and I began to imagine I would die seeing these things and I didn't want this. The syndetic listing here really helps highlight the monotony of her life she's she's become bored so her situation is very different to Lev's as we will later find out she's moving for an exciting adventure um, she's not moving out of necessity or desperation which is certainly Lev's experience and so it's quite ironic when she says I expect you understand what I mean um, because he doesn't really understand what what she means their lives clearly are very different so there is a great contrast in the reasons for them leaving look at the english the level of english that lev has so we've got lovely sorry i am legal how much please thank you may you help me later on we have stork stork's nests rain i am lost i wish for an interpreter b and b um so his language is basic, it's functional, it's mostly monosyllabic, not always, um, but it obviously highlights the limits of his English. And with that, you could say this really also links to the limits of his work um, opportunities in England. And in contrast to Lydia, she's potentially got more prospects because her English is much better. Um, it also shows that, again, he anticipates these xenophobic attitudes towards him, that he has learnt the phrase, I am legal. Um, so he's fully expecting um, that he's going to have to explain himself, um, maybe even defend himself and explain that he has a right to be there legally. Um, Lydia's here it's been quite encouraging and ha happy to help look at the imperative go on so she's encouraging him to practice his English but look at the contrast again between these two characters he says B&B &B, and of course he's talking about a bed and breakfast and she thinks he's quoting Shakespeare so again they've come from quite different educational backgrounds she clearly has more cultural um, exposure uh, to England even if she hasn't been there she's clearly studied famous English texts um, whereas he his experience obviously is much more limited and again maybe that shows that it's a greater risk for Lev in contrast to Lydia and then he really focuses on darkness falling and he notices how in his village darkness had always arrived in precisely the same way from the same direction above the same trees whether early or late whether in summer winter or spring for the whole of his life and this reiterates the fact that he's never lived anywhere else and helps us understand this is a huge move for him this is highly risky for him and must be absolutely terrifying he's only known his own village where darkness falls exactly the same way so the repetition of same 
highlights the predictability um, of his life before now. And unlike Lydia, that pre- predictability gives him comfort and he's giving that up. So again, it just makes us realise he must feel incredibly vulnerable at this time. Um, and we learn that he's um, the sawmill that he worked for closed two years ago. He hasn't been able to find work for two years and they've been living off the, the money that his mother makes from jewellery, but it isn't enough. And that really highlights des- the desperation. You could talk about the short sentence here, but it isn't enough, um, which really focuses on kind of the limited options um, that he and his family have back home in terms of making a living. Um, again, we see great contrast between these two characters. While he is drinking vodka, she's eating rye bread. Um, so just their lifestyle choices um, are very different. And again, that just adds to the discomfort of this long journey. They're sitting there like a married couple, that simile that he used earlier. Um, and they are very, very different. So it just really adds to that discomfort. Um, and we learn that he has survivor's guilt. He doesn't like looking at his own reflection because he feels guilty that he's still alive while his uh, wife is not. Um, So it just really adds this melancholic tone to this extract. And it should encourage the reader again to feel pity for Lev. Again, the bigger picture being, um, I believe, that Tremaine is encouraging the reader to have compassion for the immigrant and realise that they are human beings that have have potentially lived a really difficult life. Um, He says they ran out of trees, so here this is linked to deforestation, um, a modern problem and something that affects immigration today. Um, And again, something to think of. This is completely out of his hands. He doesn't really want to move to London. He's not Lydia. He's not doing this for an adventure. He's doing this out of necessity. And it's interesting the way he imagines his life in London. He imagines a coal fire, a tall house, rain falling outside, red buses. So there's a list here of stereotypical images. Um, So we realise that he's really going into the unknown. He has no idea what London is like, really. Um, He describes his daughter as needing clothes, shoes, books, toys, everything. The asyndetic listing makes... Um, makes it seem like her needs are endless and of course he hasn't worked for two years so it really um, emphasizes his desperation and the hyperbole everything really again highlights and stresses just how desperate they are and the short sentence brings our attention to the fact that England is his only hope everything relies on on this move and this risk that he is taking. So he notices that Lydia is reading a book called The Power and the Glory. I haven't read this and I would love if someone has something to add to this, um, if you could include it in your comments. Um, I don't know enough about it. I know it's by Graham Greene um, and I just can't imagine it's included by accident I feel like this potentially has some symbolic significance so if you've got any ideas wonderful the only thing I can think of is the power and the glory as a title is an allusion to um, uh, the Lord's Prayer for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Um, so there's some religious connotations there as well uh, but I haven't quite figured it out I feel like I might have to revisit this Um, and maybe I'll put something in the comment section if it comes to me. But if you think of anything, I'd love to hear your interpretation of this. Um, He's definitely addicted, as we see, when he's, he's... he's yearning in his he feels sorry the yearning in his lungs and in his blood his hands grow fidgety he feels tremors in his legs so he's inc- not not only uncomfortable because he's sitting on a coach for 50 hours um sharing this kind of awkwardly intimate moment with Lydia um but also because he's addicted um and the hyperphora here, how long before the next gas stop, it could be four or five hours, really shows his impatience. He's asking a question that he really knows the answer to, but it shows his desperation for a cigarette. Um, he refers to 
staying awake just like the drivers as this um an exhausting vigil that has religious connotations when people stay awake all night to pray typically if someone's dying um so it's interesting that he's almost seeing um seeing this moment this journey as a great sacrifice just like a vigil is you kind of sacrifice your sleep um in hopes that the lord will answer your prayers for the, for whoever you're praying for so could you I don't know if I'm making a weak connection here, but is staying awake through this 50 hour journey a sacrifice? Is he kind of clinging on to hope that um, his prayers will be answered? It's one way of looking at it. Again, I'd love to hear your interpretation. And then he, to pass the time, he looks at a 20 pound note. I think this has changed now. I don't think, I haven't lived in England for a while, so I can't remember, but I feel like the new 20 pound notes don't do not have Edward Alger in it but this is referring to Edward Alger he composed Land of Hope and Glory which is a very popular song and um, is considered an alternative national anthem by nationalist groups so first of all you might look at just um, the famous song that he composed Land of Hope and Glory and obviously that clearly links with why so many of the people on that coach are on that 50 hour journey they see um, Britain as the land of hope and glory for them that's why they're going there it offers so much in hope um, but it could be a reference again to the xenophobic feelings that uh, or attitudes that that also live in Britain um, since it is such a popular song amongst nationalists who um, often h hold uh, xenophobic views and, and are quite kind of anti-immigration um, so we also know that he's going to be faced with a lot of challenges and um, potentially um, be judged by by others when he arrives in the UK but look at the way he describes or how Ed, Edward Elgar is portrayed on this note. He has angels blowing a trumpet above him, the angels' radiance falling on him in vertical lines. So this religious imagery really portrays the English as literally being blessed by heaven. And you might argue this is the way... Um, Eastern Europeans view the British they are lucky they have been blessed they haven't had the hardships that we have um, and that's kind of linked to what he was taught they have never been subjected to occupation there's a sense of judgment here maybe even bitterness um, because this is in great contrast to Eastern Europe who have had um, a, a much harder history in that sense Britain is so lucky to have been surrounded by the sea and to have been protected in so many ways whereas eastern europe if you look at world war ii it was absolutely destroyed and with that came a number of different um uh, political systems um and so on so there's a sense of bitterness but not necessarily um, unfair bitterness either um, and again, this sense of envy, he's looking at this man and thinking, you've had such an easy life. This man would never have known any other system of being alive but capitalism. He would have heard the names Hitler and Stalin but n not been afraid. Would have heard, had no need to be afraid of anything except a little loss of capital in what Americans called the crash. He would have died safely in his bed before London was bombed to ruins. The angel's radiance had probably shone on his this man's brow and on his fusty clothes so he's he's envying this man this man who was born way before his time but it highlights how eastern europe's past affects eastern europeans today so the destruction of the world of the second world war the multiple political systems um the the political changes um, the territorial changes that have taken place in Eastern Europe still have its effect on people today and, and partially explain why there is vast numbers of immigrants moving from Eastern Europe to the UK. Um, 
And so it's just a reminder again to have compassion. People today have been affected by things that happened back in the 1930s, something that's completely out of their hands. We should have compassion, see them as victims. Um, but he refers to um, to Britain and to British people as their, them, their. Look at those pronouns of separation. He doesn't have a sense that he belongs and he, I guess, maybe anticipates that he won't be um, well received either. Um, so there's definitely this sense of separation, which really um, sums up the experience of the immigrant they will never feel completely like they belong um but he's going to make them share their infernal look infernal here has con connotations of evil um which reminds us potentially yes the british are lucky but it's not just pure luck the british have also done some terrible things in the past and that luck has come with them potentially doing evil acts but he's saying i'm going to take some of that luck that has kind of derived from from evil so again there's a sense of judgment there um but look at the declarative and active voice i'm going to make them share it with me he is determined he is entering um london with great ambition great determination to change his life and we should really as a reader um not only be compassionate about the hardships of his life but also have respect for him of taking such a leap of faith um all in the name of looking after his family doing this for his daughter and doing this for his mother and trying to turn his life around and that's it please as always i'd love to hear your own thoughts please share your own ideas in the comments section um and you don't have to agree with anything i i said you can always respectfully dis disagree and, and share your own interpretations